Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified. So what are we going to talk about? Well, I want to continue my discussion on if I can do it, so can you with a mystery chart reveal. I'm not going to go into a lot of details this week just because of the changing conditions. We're not going to have any new mystery charts likely trigger. So we'll just cover that real quickly. And then I want to get into the power of the plugin. I want to talk a little bit about market timing. And I'll tell you more on how to get a market timing course in just one second. I want to show you some of the setups that you could use with the plugin to help you trade markets. I want to talk a little bit about volatility. And then I want to touch upon simplified trend following using the plugin. By the way, I do take requests. If there's something you want me to cover, please shoot me an email. He tried to say at DaveLander.com slash contact to reach me. And if it doesn't fit into this venue, which has a specific format and time, I could do it in my Thursday shows. And you can find those at DaveLander.com slash webinar. Register, even if you the date is kind of old, you will be you will be allowed access to the current show. Once again, easy for me to say. If you want the slides for this presentation, not a whole lot in this presentation, but from all the other presentations, a lot of good stuff in there. If I say so myself, go to DaveLander.com slash stock charts. I'll also give you a free market timing course, which will dovetail into a lot of the conversation we're talking about. We're going to talk about in just a few minutes. All right, let's do a mystery chart reveal and then talk a little bit about the methodology in action. So ZH was the one I recommended last week. And if you look at the trading service right here, entry was 9.95, stop at 8.20 with an initial profit target of 11.70. I talked about it being an IPO pullback. You can see nice thrust higher here, a bit of a pullback. Let's take a look at what happens. Entry up here, 9.95, and you can see the stock just continues to implode. So what do you do? Well, nothing. I took it off as an official recommendation. And the great thing is no capital is put into harm's way. Now, it's a little hard to quantify as far as performance on a trade not taken, but at the least, you don't lose money because you didn't take the trade. And the other thing is, if you did take the trade, it means that you busted the plan, and more than likely, you're going to bust the plan when it comes to keeping your risk at a predefined level so there's a lot of problems with a not following the plan but the good news is if you just wait for an entry many times and i'm shocked at how many times it'll keep you out of a lot of trouble if you get around to it go in and look at a lot of the archives for the trading simplified shows and then go to youtube.com slash c as in custom slash dave landry and you can check out the week of charts and we talk about these type of things quite often if you want to get deeper into it i have a money management course but that's behind a firewall on my website so the let me just show you the rules real quick for the 10 percent tfm system tfm stands for trend following moron a lot of times i'll develop a system not so much to trade it mechanically but to show a that simplified trend following can work and b to kind of help me decide on where i should be especially when it comes to something like market timing now the theory behind this system is if a market's going to go from a to b to c it's going to have to pass through b and near c on its way to c and conversely if the market is dropping and let's say it's at all-time highs at c if it's going to lose 50 percent of its value it's going to lose 10% of its value first. So it's going to go away from C. So basically what we want to do is if a market is within 10% of its 50-week closing high, and we, we're going to use weekly charts for this, we want to be long, okay, provided, of course, the last two-week lows are greater than the 50-week simple moving average. In other words, you have two weeks of daylight. And I'm going to walk you through quite a few examples of this. Then you want to be long and you want to exit the market when it's 10 percent or more away from its 50-week closing high in other words it's no longer near c and the close is simply just below the 50-week moving average we're not going to wait for downside daylight because a lot of times or landry light as we now call it we're not going to wait for the downside landry light because sometimes by the time you do so the market could have a pretty serious spill so we kind of want to 
sell first and ask questions later. And then when we get in, the whipsaw filter is the Landry light of two lows, and that keeps us, not all the time, but quite often, from getting whipsawed and jerked around. All right, let's jump in to the live charts, and I want to show you the plug-in, and I'll show you the market timing first. So I'm often asked, where's my plug-in? How do I get it? Well, number one, it's free. You have to like this video, though. That's all I ask. And then you click this little plug-in button right here, and you will be able to instantly load the plugin. Once it's loaded, if you scroll down to the bottom of your screen, you'll see it down here. So in this chart here, I plotted Landry percent from closing high, which is the histogram down here, and then Landry percent of close, which is up here. Now, the parameters for market timing, as I just said, this line is 10%. So the new closing high is right here, as you can see. This line here is 10% away. The histogram on the bottom just tells us how far the market is away, a graphical representation, from its 50-week closing high. And this is just a simple 50-week moving average. So this is a weekly chart. On a daily chart, obviously, it'd be a 50-day moving average. But if you swap out, swap out to a weekly, it would be a 50-week moving average. So back here, when the virus hit or when we began to take the virus seriously okay we close below the what I call the buy line or the percent of close so we were further away than 10 percent as you can see down here from the 50 week closing high and we were below the 50 week moving average now what's pretty surprising to me is that this I kind of view as a longer term sell signal if you go in and watch some of the shows that I did Last year, okay, last spring, you'll see that I was pretty amazed back then that this longer term sell signal gave us a buy in some cases before some of the daily signals kicked in. But anyway, you can see we had a pretty serious spill from that. Now, the market turned right back up and went straight back up, obviously. So you could argue that, oh, well, that was kind of a whipsaw type of signal. And it was, but I'll tell you this, the market did drop from this signal 28% to its lows. And that's nothing to sneeze about. And if we go in and take a little, little spreadsheet that I put together, you could see the last little drop here. Okay, I call that the diaper change. And I stole that from, from Ian McActivy. And he talks about a diaper change being just this market flush out where it scares the bejesus out of everyone now when i did this system going back about going back about 30 years i thought the results were pretty darn good but they weren't amazing and the thing is it, my original intent was to avoid as much of these diaper change moments as possible and the further back in time i went the more of these diaper change moments it avoided so in other words if you'd have started in the late 20s trading this, you'd have gotten out at a 24% gain, okay? And then after you got out, the market dropped another 83%. So you had a little bit of a drawdown going into this profitable trade here. You gave up some of those open gains before you got stopped out. But what's amazing is the market lost, again, another 83% from that point there. And then right here, 43%, 22%, 26%. Obviously, if we fast forward to the 70s, there were some ad abysmal times back then. I'm, I'm old, but I'm not quite that old. I, I wasn't trading in the 70s. I think I started in the late 80s, if memory serves. And you could see that there were some pretty ugly moves back in the 70s, 43% back then. And then what was kind of cool, and this there's no guarantee to this, and I like to come up with like a little system, simple system, very, very simple, such as this, and go back and see what happened in times like the crash and all. It, and it would have gotten you out, believe it or not, right before the crash. And the low of that move was another 24% lower. And then obviously 2000, the market lost 44%. The NASDAQ back then, it'd be fun to go test this on the NASDAQ. I know you probably want to party with me. But the NASDAQ at one point was down 70-something percent, and I thought that was pretty amazing. In 2008, the market hit 13-year lows, and just by exiting on this simple little silly system, you would have avoided another 
percent loss from where the market exited. I saw a YouTube video yesterday. I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but they were talking about averaging down, and if you have enough money, you can average down and blah, blah, blah. Well, I think they failed to realize that a market could hit 13-year lows, and if you look at this spreadsheet, you could see every now and then the market loses about half of its value, and I've seen it at least two times in my lifetime. And then again, this last little spill, 28%, even though the market came all the way back, that was a pretty serious thing. And I know some people that were hurt really bad during that spill and they needed the money and they were forced out of the market. And I think they got out and I think that was the good, th the right thing to do. Now they didn't get out on a signal. They waited until they were down 30% and in a lot of trouble. So it's important to study market timing and understand just some simple little systems like this to help keep you out of trouble. One thing I was thinking about this morning before I got in here and checked the futures, I'm, I get up like at 4.55 every morning and I start thinking about what I'm going to do and start writing my morning pages. I write three handwritten pages every morning. And one of the things I was thinking about is like, you know, Dave, you were looking at the charts yesterday in preparation for this presentation and this system it looks like it's going to be a long, long time before it triggers. And this thing has been long forever. It got long back here two days, or in this case two weeks, I should say, of Landry Light and closing above the buy line, meaning that it's within 10%. This is 10% down here, as you can see. Anything within 10% is bullish. Anything more than 10% is bearish, okay? And it's just been long forever. And I got to thinking, well, this is going to be kind of, boring to show them that hey it got long back here and this is the market timing system and it looks like it'll be a long time before we get a signal but what i got to thinking about is that like right now it's it's uh we have torrential rains that are that are just nailing us we had 14 inches of rain a while back and then now we're getting hit again today and one thing i was thinking about is the rain is just pouring down is the time to buy flood insurance is when it's when the skies are clear right so the time to start studying market timing is when the market is doing well and everything's going swimmingly. So when, not if, it begins to tank, you are ready. And I come in this morning and the futures are down 50 points or so. And that was a bit of a, a scare coming in. But you can see we still have a long ways to go before we get a trigger in this system. So that's the... TFM 10% system using the two indicators from the plug-in, percent from closing high and percent of close, okay? And you can change these parameters to your liking. Now, the question is, hey, Dave, will this work in ETFs? The answer is yes. Will this work in individual issues? The answer is yes. However, the big caveat is, let's say you're trading a volatile biotech. Well, that buy line might be at 30%. I think 10% is a good round number for something like the S&P 500, but you're gonna to have to adjust that volatility much higher in some cases if you're trading a much more volatile stock. Now, another thing I talk about with market timing is the weekly bow tie signals. So down here, we have Landry proper order, and it goes from green to red, and there's a little yellow here and there. The green means the 10 simple is greater than the 20 exponential, and the 20 exponential is greater than the 30 exponential. The moving averages are in proper uptrend order. And when it's red, it means they are in proper downtrend order. Now, I've done a plethora of presentations on this, so you can go into my YouTube channel and go on my website, especially if you go into the courses behind the firewall. But the bottom line is, if you just pay attention to this and stay out of the market or short when it's red, okay? And then maybe sit on your hands a little bit when it's yellow, meaning, meaning that there's not a whole lot of trend. And then you wanna be long when it's green or mostly green. And you could see that you would be long during the bull markets and again, short during the bear markets. And you could see we've been green for a while in here. Obviously we had a little spill last year, okay? And that's a lot bigger than it looks on the chart. A lot more than just a little blip in here so i think it pays to pay attention to these things even though a lot of times it comes right back but look again this is a 50 something percent loss 13 year lows 
Now, a 13-year low is nothing to sneeze at. Let's say you're newly married, you have a kid, and you don't have a whole lot of money first couple of years because these little kids are expensive, right? And then you finally get around to start saving when the kid's a toddler. And by the way, you can't call a kid a toddler anymore, so I don't, I don't know what this world's coming to, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> I wish the show wasn't PG-13. I have some other names for him sometime. Anyway, long story endless. By the time the kid's getting ready to go to college, you just lost half of his college fund, and that's something to, to, to really think about, and that's a, that could put a lot of pressure on you. Now, let's say you're nearing retirement, and the market loses half its value. You just lost half of your retirement. By the way, Greg Morris has done a lot of research in market time, and I'd encourage you to read uh, anything from Greg. I always learn a lot from Greg, good friend of mine. Anyway, one thing he points out is a lot of the buy and hold or buy and hope, as I call it, metrics are based on an 81-year time horizons. And I've done presentations before where Sweet Brown pops up and says, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> so anyway, let's zoom in a little bit on this and I'll show you the bow ties. So let's take like a two-year chart and take a look. Okay. So if you go back in time to the let's say let's go back to 2008 especially when these are coming off of major major highs you can see that the moving averages went from uptrend proper order back here green and then they flipped over and they went to red okay and then you look to short on the first little bounce that we have and just this indicator, silly little indicator down here, could really help to keep you on the right side of the market. And this works well with stocks too, knowing whether or not you're in the right on the right side of the market. So let's take a look at CPE. This was a bow tie, the last bow tie I remember, in fact, in my trading service. And you could see back here we had a bow tie to the upside. The moving averages went from downtrend proper order meaning that the 10 was below the 20 and the 20 was below the 30 to uptrend proper order over a fairly short period of time so notice that we were in a lot of red down here downtrend is nothing you want to do there had a little bit of a transition period a little yellow meaning that the moving averages are crossing over and then they turned to green once they turn to green after being red especially when they're at all-time lows like this or multi-year lows in this particular case you look to buy the market. Now, in this case, it was also a pattern I call a first thrust. And if you go in and watch the shows that I've done on trend transitions, that'll make a little bit of sense. But that's when you have a major low and you have a thrust higher followed by a first pullback. So as you can see, this is a great pattern. We got long this stock and then we flipped it out. And right now, at least coming in today, we're up 460% on those shares. Now obviously every trade doesn't turn into a huge winner like this, but as you can see, it really pays when it does. And we're playing for the outliers and this simple little pattern, bow ties that is, can help you get into stocks like this very early on. Now speaking of stocks and trends, let's hop into Landry Light real quick. So here we have Bitcoin down here we plotted Landry Light, okay? And this is just simply a 30-day EMA. In the Landry Light, it's based on the 30-day EMA. We set the reference level to 10, okay? And it, this means that if you have green above 10, the market is likely trending. If you have red below 10, the market is likely selling off. And as you can see, this simple little indicator, again, something pretty darn simple, could help to keep you on the right side of the market. One of my favorite patterns using this is what I call Landry Light pullbacks. Landry Light, again, lows are just greater than the moving average. You can see it down here. Looking for a pullback to the moving average. When that happens, there's no longer Landry Light, so Landry Light goes to zero. By the way, I've said this a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand more just because a lot of people are failing the quizzes on my website. The Landry Light does not measure magnitude, it just counts the number of days that there is Landry Light. In other words, the number of days of lows are greater than the moving average. 
The great thing about it, though, is when you see it up here at 50, 60, or 100, you know the market is likely to correct. And we actually use that correction to our advantage. But you can see Bitcoin triggered way back about 15,000 or 16,000. And then it doubled from there. And then it set up once again back here, okay? Set up again right here, a little money management. You could have done okay with that. And last little signal, it pulled back and kind of kept on pulling back. Oops, right here, okay? Just kept on pulling back. So that's Landry Light pullbacks. I've talked about those quite a bit in prior presentations. So without going into a lot of details today, just know that that's a great little pattern to look for. And I'd recommend you check that out. Now let's talk about Landry volatility. Now Landry volatility is, it's a bit of a misnomer because it's not my volatility. It's just what the programmer called it. So we'll probably have to change that at some point in time. But all I'm using is a 50 day historical volatility and historical volatility also known as statistical volatility is just a measurement as defined by the name of what's happened historically so a 50 day would tell us what's happened over the last 50 days well obviously in 2020 volatility was kind of dropping off and kind of quiet and that's an anomaly of a market that's just kind of bumping along okay and it was down here about 10 to 13 or so and then you can see we had this huge spike higher and obviously that tells us that the volatility has greatly increased. Now, the way I use volatility, I use it in a couple different ways, and it's beyond the scope of today's presentation to get into all the nuances of volatility, but there's some pretty cool things with volatility. And one of them is you could use them as a general gauge, a standardized gauge, so to speak, against other stocks in the market compared to a benchmark of, let's say, something like the S&P 500. So S&P 500 right now, the volatility reading for the 50-day HV is 17. Now, in order to beat the market, I strongly believe that you need to be trading stocks with a volatility that is much greater than the market. And I'll show you the setup because I doubt it'll trigger. But here's a setup that was in my daily trading service coming into today, UT. Z. Now, S&P 500, remember, was like 17. You can see this one's up around 44, which is actually low, usually, for the, the volatile stocks that have been trading over the last couple of years. But anyway, you can see that it is more than twice the volatility of the overall market. You can see nice little breakout, nice little trend higher, followed by a pullback, little TKO type of move here. We talked about those in earlier shows, so go in and watch those if you're having trouble sleeping at night. <laughs> And then if we take a look at some of the other stocks that are currently in the portfolio, such as, let's say, CPE that we talked about a few minutes ago. Let's see what the volatility is in that one. Volatility in that one's at 96, okay? So that's about five times what the overall market was. And when we got in this stock a long, long time ago, it was still pretty high, as you see, going way back in time. So I think in order to beat the market... I strongly believe that you have to trade in stocks that are more volatile than the overall market. I often tell people, I get asked a lot, Dave, how do you pick one setup over the other? It's like, well, if you really like both of them and they both look fantastic, then pick the one that is of the higher volatility. Now, you can't have too much of a good thing. For instance, I, was, I had a stock on my watch list, BTX. And it looks pretty good, but the volatility is at 300. So once you see a stock get this crazy volatile, you need to be really, really careful. And what I like, what I like to do is, is scan and then sort my scan results by volatility. And usually the ones that are up in 200, 300, I just kind of toss those out. And then I find out by going through the stocks where the sweet spot is in the market. And right now, it's somewhere between 40 and 100 but this is a pretty good looking stock but the volatility is pretty whack so just know that if you go in to trade this stock be in for you're going to be in for a very bumpy bumpy ride the other thing you could do with volatility is help you use it as a gauge for your stops so a stock like this with an hv of 300 you're going to have to use an incredibly wide stop on a stock like this now you want to compensate by trading fewer shares but just know Know the nature of the stock that you are trading, and it's kind of like the better, better the devil you know. In general, I do believe in trading more volatile stocks with 
within reason, okay? Usually I won't trade something that's, let's say, 150 or more, unless it's like a crazy uranium stock, which tend to have super high volatility. I'm sure there will be some other type of stocks sooner or later that that just be crazy volatile. And if you want to go in and trade them, you're just going to have to realize that, hey, these are crazy volatile stocks. Now, one thing I occasionally experiment with, and if you watched enough shows, you'll know, and I like to put in multiple volatilities on a chart. Now, I don't know if I can share these or not, but I've created some little templates that I'm using. And one is called multi-volatility. And it's kind of an interesting thing to see where volatility is headed when you plot a plethora of different volatility readings. Now, again, very complex subject, more than we have the time to get into in this venue, or at least today. But one thing you can watch for is when the shorter term volatility is very low compared to the longer term volatility and volatility contracts and expands. So when you see that shorter term volatility, and this is from the work of Nathan Berg and then later Connors, and then I did some volatility work inspired by Connors after that, you can look for a big move in the market. But like I said a second ago, one thing I've been doing is plotting a lot of different volatilities on different charts just to kind of see where volatility is headed. And as I've said quite a bit, I have a friend of mine. He's also a client. He's been with me forever. And he was absolutely, absolutely printing money back during the pandemic. And he was trading Boeing and he was just in there scalping, scalp for a few hours in the morning and then go off and save lives. But anyway, he was making all this money, and then he stopped making money. And he says, well, Dave, it was working so well. Well, those are some various dangerous words to say. But in this particular case, in this particular case, we can see why it stopped working, and that's because the volatility dropped off. So I'm just kind of scratching the surface with volatility. It is a little bit more complex. It is a little bit more than trading simplified. But once you understand the concepts, it'll make a lot of sense. So that's my time for this week. If you have any questions, again, you can reach me at daylander.com slash contact. If you want a lot of information, including all three of my books in PDF format, you can go to daylander.com slash stock charts. I want to thank everybody for watching, and may the trend be with you. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.